Hey guys, me and Mira are back to discuss those uh, commentary audio files that have been data mined from the Street Fighter 6 closed beta and then reveal a lot of information on characters that haven't been released yet, basically the entire roster, and they give us hints on their moves and basically their fighting styles and how they're going to play. Now, if you guys missed out, there is a lot of information here, so we're covering one character at a time, and me and Mira already did JP, so be sure to check that out on the channel right. already. It's very, very interesting. So today, Mir, we're going to do Monong, and uh, I got to say, I got to apologize to everyone ahead of time, Mir, because our French pronunciation is not going to be top notch, and there's a lot of French words here. So prepare yourselves. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, not specialists. No. I think our time with French was about like 20 years ago. <laughs> so forgive us, guys, please. So with Manon, we heard about her before the character has been revealed, of course, through the leaks mirror. And the information that describes all of the leaked characters has been pretty accurate so far with all the characters. And the description for Manon before was very simple. It was just female able. <laughs> That's it, Mir. Right. That already made me raise an eyebrow because it implies that she has able moves, which yes. I uh, not necessarily want to see again. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. It's going to make it very hard for us to go over these moves and figure out what they mean without thinking of able because we're just going to naturally right. compare them to able. So yeah, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of hints that she has similarities to able too, which we're going to go over. First off, her fighting style definitely a judo fighting style uh, because yeah. we hear the commentary tracks literally say she's a judo expert and uh, she's part judo. The judo expert from France, Manon, celebrates her birthday today. Part judo! Right, this is pretty similar to Abel himself, which was supposed to be a combat sambo practitioner, which is a Russian uh, self-defense, you know, grappling martial art based on judo. How did you know that? You know? Uh, I actually was interested in trying combat sambo a long time ago. Oh, instead okay. Of Sistema. So I there mean, you go. For that, a character that's the that backstory. You, for a character you don't particularly like me, you should know a lot about him. <laughs> I don't just find that I did like Ebo for a while, and then oh, I realized really? that was wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, we know a lot more about Manong. She, first off, she's French. Obviously, duh. Yeah. <laughs> she's French. Um, yeah. Abel is also French, by the way. Um, right. She sports French colors because we see it from the leak and now the reveal from her. Uh, yeah, she especially has the pink hair. Yeah. Always. She has a, a, a French name, Mir, Manon, and um, all of her moves are from the commentary tracks are named in French. And of course, she uh, the commentary track also says she is from France. The judo expert from France, Manon, celebrates her birthday today. So, I mean, right. it's outrageously really French. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, is there any other French characters in the Street Fighter series? Uh, right, there's Remy, or Remy, I suppose they, the French oh, would say. Yeah. Who's a uh, Savat practitioner. I think it's pronounced that way. <laughs> Which hmm. is a French martial art. But there's more to Manong. She's apparently very talented. There's more than just Trudeau. Mm -hmm. So she's apparently a fashion model as well, Mir. We actually got a hint of that too in the intro. Because she wasn't wearing like her gi and stuff from the leaks. And she's basically like an icon. I, I think there's going to be some juicy dlc costumes for her you know <laughs> yeah, we'll see how much the fans like her maybe they'll be able to uh you know ignore the gameplay and just look at the looks uh in the commentary right. tracks it says this cool fashion model doesn't just walk the walk though those long legs can unleash some killer moves this cool fashion model doesn't just walk the walk though those long legs can unleash some killer moves long legs mirror does yeah, that that's worry a hint you? at a, a move then I didn't wish to see again <laughs> Abel's traditional foreign medium kick. I think we haven't seen the last of it, guys. Yeah, the step kick. Long leg step kick. I, I mean, maybe maybe he's talking about because, you know, mostly fashion. And these old school fashion models have like long, sexy legs. So maybe yeah. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, it's just an excuse to give foreign medium kick full screen range. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's definitely what it is. But no, there's more guys. She's not just a fashion model. She's not just a judo champion. Uh, she's also a ballet dancer, apparently, too. Because a yeah. lot of the move names are not only in French, but they're references to ballet. Part ballet, part judo, and all style. They're putting a lot of work into these brand new characters on who they are, you know, and what they do. They're just kind of going the extra mile because I just feel like with Street Fighter V, especially with season two, it was very hit or miss. 
it's very hard to add new characters in the Street Fighter universe, I feel, because of the crazy nostalgic, you know, lineage that all these other characters had. Yeah, yeah. No, people... Not only that, but obviously, uh, if you rush them in without a strong background, which is exactly what Street Fighter V had to do, unfortunately, because of, you know, the limited story and all that, right? Like, yeah. they just didn't have the resources. Then you created a lot of characters that just don't really have any background at all. Right. So it's very important for Street Fighter Six that this doesn't repeat itself. A lot of characters uh, that were new to Street Fighter Five are just very forgettable. It's it's easy to just have a character that's that they're related to as like a way to shoehorn them in, but to create yeah. it from scratch is a little bit more difficult. And it, it almost seems like uh, with Abel, they didn't really do well, so they're trying to kind of do a revision of the character, so to speak. So just before me and Mir start discussing all of the moves and all that, let me give you guys a chance to hear all the commentary tracks first, and then we'll break it down from there. The judo expert from France, Manon, celebrates her birthday today. This cool fashion model doesn't just walk the walk, though. Those long legs can unleash some killer moves. Best watch your step. They gotta make something happen to increase Mano's metal level. Connects with the Ranverse to boost their metal level. Goes for Mano's level two super for some sweet damage. Goes for its wah. Mano's level two super. Straight to the point. Glides up. Connects. Etwa doing the business. Safely increases their throw level. Ranverse, the hit throw connects. Nice manage Dore. Getting those throws all pumped up. Mano's metal level is still kind of low here. They're going to need to find some chances to boost it. They can't be shy about stocking metal levels with Mano because the counter doesn't reset between rounds. Keep some guessing with that feint. That increasing metal level is going to mean more damage and more of a threat from each grab. Manej Duare for the long game return. Oh, the pas they do is going to turn out some big damage. Part ballet, part judo, and all style. Comes in hot and Mano grabs him. This move brings a whole new meaning to the last dance. It's the pas de deux. Lifts them with the wrong pawn. It's what a dancing all over that life gauge. Ready to wreck that life bar. The fear of being thrown is there, so they gotta take advantage. Grand fete, good guess there. These throws are lethal now. Look at the damage. The metal level is getting there. Pressure's really mounting up. Fakes, max metal level. The show's about to begin. Ron Pawn takes them off their feet. Get ready to be thrown to the sun. Steadily building that metal level. When are they gonna grab them? All prepped up, ready to throw them into orbit. Sliding in. Waltz is in there and sweeps them off their feet. Yo, let me get my dictionary for this one. Remember that! The throws are looking potent enough. Now how could they work them in? Ron Poong! They can't keep their hands to themselves! Swan Lake is on fire now! Look at the damage! The Ron Verse hits! Sends them tumbling! Ooh, those buffed up throws are really hitting hard now! Goes in with the Arabesque! Snares them with the Ron Verse! Arabesque! Mono relies on boosting that metal level up to secure better damage. They're gonna need to work in some grabs somewhere. Oh, you try to zig left, but Mano zagged right! Now my girl's got inside and gonna take you for a ride! All right, Mir, let's start talking about Manon's gameplay now and her move list. Uh, so the big thing about her, which we're going to be talking about mostly in this video, is this metal leveling system. You hear about it in like half of the commentary tracks. Now, the right. thing is, we don't know if it's metal with like a T, you know, or if it's metal, as in like you're wearing a metal. So we, I'm just going right. to call it metal system uh, for now, but it could be either way. I, I'm not entirely yeah. sure. The big obvious thing is that you see her wearing this gold medal around her neck. And it's not right. just in the leaked picture of her. It's also in when she has like the in wearing the fashion clothing. She's still wearing mm -hmm. that medal around her neck. I think that's a big deal that we can't ignore. Um, she might be, you know, an Olympic champion, for example. That's why, you know, we know she does judo, but she's probably a judo champion. She's pretty talented. She's also an icon. So I wouldn't be surprised if this a lot of this of her success and everything she does has made her very famous for example but either way this metal system is going to be the core part of the character she'll be building this metal levels so take a listen to some of these tracks the metal level is getting there pressure's really mounting up steadily building that metal level when are they going to grab them so it seems pretty obvious mir especially if you want to compare her to abel that she's going to be basically a momentum based grappler kind of like g i guess where she's going to grab you and she's going to get progressively stronger as she levels up this metal and she's going to grab you even more and that's going to be basically her entire game plan 
So I guess Mir, the big question is what do these metal levels do specifically? We're not entirely sure listening to all the tracks. The only thing we do know is that it 100% does increase the damage of her throws, but we don't know if it's just her command grabs or her normal throws, for example, you know? Mm -hmm. These throws are lethal now. Look at the damage. Getting those throws all pumped up. The throws are looking potent enough. Now, how could they work them in? Ooh, those buffed up throws are really hitting hard now. It could also change some other properties of the throws because the threat of the throws is mentioned specifically how they're more threatening as she gets more levels. So it could be that she gets more range, uh, maybe better follow-ups of the throws, both in the sense of Oki or uh, maybe even being able to pick up a combo. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe her supers, if she has super throws, will become... Uh, more powerful yeah maybe unlock more more throws as special moves kind of like jamie does yeah it's very difficult to tell right. especially because there's not a lot of moves that are specifically mentioned to be throws aside from a couple yeah we just know that there's definitely some throws that get more damage. You know, we kind of think too, like like Mika, like maybe being you know, like after she uses her V skill, she can combo into the throws themselves. And, right. Yeah. yeah. So we're on some of the lines. You know, it just literally says damage. Like these throws are lethal now. Look at the damage. But then mm -hmm. there's things like getting those throws all pumped up. You know, the throws are looking potent enough. Now, how are they gonna work them in? And uh, these throws are really hitting hard now. Like to me, that just like says damage. Right. Yeah, that does seem to hint at that. But there's also other stuff that I'm not sure how much it is metaphor or how much it is, you know, actual gameplay. Mm -hmm. Like get ready to be thrown into the sun <laughs> or ready to throw them into orbit. Yeah. And um, yeah, I wonder what that means. It's like get ready to be thrown to the sun, ready to throw them into orbit. Maybe some moves get, you know, special properties, right? Like become launchers. Uh, maybe they put you full screen so that uh, you can approach the opponent easily in the corner things like that right 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 there's, there's all possibilities more corner carry or is it just it just looks crazier and crazier you know it gets flashier and flashier yeah. as they're getting thrown higher yeah, and higher up thinking, in the screen. Uh, clark from kof when he throws you in the air and then he just waits for you to land <laughs> <laughs> yeah that makes Maybe me think the time of gets longer and longer as you level up <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it might be like that <laughs> That would be cool if it wasn't just, you know, damage, but it actually just like animation wise, it looked a lot different. Okay, so the next obvious question, Mir, is uh, how does she increase the level now? Now, this is another thing that's kind of confusing. It could be different than just like a stock system. So yeah. she could just level it up by just going down, down, punch like a lot of other characters, how they level up their stocks, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's there's these two like throw moves that we're hearing a lot from the commentary tracks. Uh, so take a listen to these. Connects with the Ranverse to boost their metal level. Nice, Manish Dore. Getting those throws all pumped up. So the first is this hit throw called Ranverse, and it means uh, reversed. Connects with the Ranverse to boost their metal level. Ranverse, the hit throw connects. So it yeah. seems to be a, a hit throw because, you know, the commentary track literally says it hits them. Yeah, uh, so this means that this is the kind of thing that you can use in her combos, right? Like as a combo ender. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think based on the name, it's fair to assume that it might switch positions, which in um, Manon's case might not be beneficial because uh, she wants you, for example, to push you to the corner. But if this gives her uh, an actual metal level, this could be very valuable, right? It is implied that it is the safer way of building up her level. Uh, but then there's another throw that's mentioned in the comedy tracks called... Uh... Ma manage Dore? Ma manage Dore, <laughs> yeah. And we don't know about this because it says, Nice Manage Dore, getting all those throws pumped up. Nice Manage Dore, getting those throws all pumped up. Manage Dore for the long game return. The translation to this move is like a golden merry-go-round. In my head, I'm thinking like Mika giant throw and it mm. side switches. That's how I see it. Well, I was thinking uh, maybe like Laura's sunset wheel which is their command throw, where she mm. spins you in the air. Yeah, uh, she, anyway, she... it's probably going to be some kind of spin. I can imagine that much. And right. uh, I guess we can mention that Abel's tornado throw also spins you around. So yeah. again, this implies that this also levels up your throws in some fashion. And it could be that this is a command grab version of the level up in the sense that uh, obviously it carries a little bit more risk because if you don't do it right and they jump it, 
and then you risk getting punished. So maybe that's the implication here. Back to that, you know, a safe way and unsafe way, Mir, that it seems mm -hmm. to be implying. Safely increases their throw level. It's one of the commentary tracks. Safely increases their throw level. Mono relies on boosting that metal level up to secure better damage. They're going to need to work in some grabs somewhere. They, they hit grab, you know, something you can combo into. But, you know, if you do a command grab, there's risk to it if the opponent jumps or backdashes, right? I feel like that's interesting, but when it, it also implies that there is no like down down punch because that would obviously be a safe way being full screen and doing down down right. punch. so it makes sense because they uh talk about how it's important for a manon to build the throw level and how you know they kind of have to get in to build up this throw level which is not something that you would necessarily have to do if you could just do it full screen with down down punch mm -hmm. So it seems like Manon has to take a list, at least a little bit of risk or land some hits. Yeah, it's like Capcom wants her to just always play aggressive regardless of what uh, the metal level is. And the more successful you are, the more dangerous she is, you know? Like, they don't mm -hmm. want a grappler to just kind of hang back and then just boost her levels and kind of go in. That Which was yeah. something that kind of like G did, but G had projectiles, you know? Doesn't look like Manon right. has projectiles at all. So it's a little different for her, right? The last line is that Manon relies on boosting that metal level up to secure better damage they're gonna need to work in some grabs somewhere mono relies on boosting that metal level up to secure better damage they're gonna need to work in some grabs somewhere once again mm. it's another hint that it's not like down down punch is something to do with those these two particular grabs that we keep hearing the ron verse yeah. and the mirage dore uh, constantly through the commentary tracks connects with the ron verse to boost their metal level nice manage dore getting those throws all pumped up. Now, something else, Mir, which is interesting, if you listen to all the tracks, there's a lot of hints implying that maybe she's weaker without the metal levels. Like, what I mean is she starts off at a disadvantage. Kind of like, you know, when Jamie doesn't drink, he's missing a lot of moves and he's doing like 90% damage, you know, 10% less than normal, right. you know, before he gets to level two. So these lines are best watch your step. Uh, they got to make something happen to increase Manon's metal level. And uh, that increasing metal level is going to mean more damage and more of a threat from each grab. And then finally, uh, Manon's metal level is still kind of low here. They're going to need to find some chances to boost it. Best watch your step. They got to make something happen to increase Mono's metal level. That increasing metal level is going to mean more damage and more of a threat from each grab. Mono's metal level is still kind of low here. They're going to need to find some chances to boost it. Right. It's possible that, uh, like Jamie, she doesn't have access to all of her special moves immediately. Or maybe uh, this throw level might affect something that is not just the throws maybe some unique mechanic that she has that you know we don't hear mentioned but also like you were saying the damage could start very low just because the beginning of the round is basically getting these uh, levels built up so that you're kind of like get, banking for a long-term investment almost, right? Mm -hmm. Like trying to get the, the levels at first. It doesn't matter the damage you do, but once you have them, then that's where you can really mount the pressure and be scary. What makes that even more interesting is that the stacks of the metals mirror might be actually pretty high because mm. I, th I think it's possible she has more than three levels because there's these other lines that says they can't be shy about stocking metal levels with Monong because the counter doesn't reset between rounds they can't be shy about stocking metal levels with mano because the counter doesn't reset between rounds so right that means if she gets these metal levels throughout the entire match i would assume it's got to be more than like your typical three right yeah i, th I think personally the lowest minimum level that i can think of is five but I, I would have guessed ten personally ten? whoa yeah <laughs> <laughs> because you have to think about it if it's um if it's something that you can get just at the end of combos with a hit throw for example mm -hmm. or landing a command throw especially if they're low damage early on we have to assume that this is basically what most of your game plan is going to be right yeah so landing some throws shouldn't be too difficult because it basically means just hitting the opponent and mm -hmm. as such i feel like you're gonna have a lot of levels and yeah. you don't want to make the top level be too easy to achieve either mm -hmm. because that's when she's the scariest right right and you don't want that to be just something that you get easily especially if you can just keep it over the the rounds right mm -hmm. so i think it has to be something high like level 10. yeah I, that that would be really cool and it, it wouldn't be that annoying to watch if it's not just down down punch like once again see so you're going full screen if it's something that's yeah. just naturally building up as you're playing it, it wouldn't be bad what the level is but that'd be really cool i mean it would mean that she would have to be very strong if she reached max level because uh yeah 
we hear a track, uh, Max uh, Metal Level, the show is about to begin. Max Metal Level, the show's about to begin. So I guess that's why, Mir, where we're saying she probably doesn't lose the metal levels. You know, if if yeah. you think she has 10, you know, I don't think it's going to be something like G where she gets knocked down and she loses and it's going up and down like crazy. I think it's just something you start off with and you try to go all the way by the end of the match, you know? I just wish I knew, like, what it changes with the throws besides damage, you know? I wish I could see it because it, it sounds really fun. And if it is just two grabs that she's building off of, that would be very interesting too because... People would have to figure out like all these interesting setups and combo routes uh, to land these grabs consistently because the opponent would have to know in the matchup too what these grabs are right. and how to avoid them. Because we know for sure she at least has one command grab that gets the, the metal level and one hit grab that gets her the level, right? Which means she can combo into one and she can reset into one like a traditional right. grappler should, you know? But yeah, she's definitely, like, after all the stuff we just discussed so far, she is definitely a momentum-based grappler. Like, that is her her main jam, her main archetype. She might even buff some of the damage of her moves too, Mir, because we're gonna now talk about her special moves. So we're done talking about the metal stuff, which was, I yeah, know, it was a lot. So now we're yeah. getting into the moves, Mir, and, and bear with me. This is where the pronunciation is gonna get out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start off by talking about your favorite move first, Mir. <laughs> is yeah my favorite move <laughs> <laughs> so there's this one track that says swan leg is on fire now look at the damage swan leg is on fire now look at the damage so i can't help but think mir swan leg sounds i don't know kind of like step kick <laughs> what do you think? right and i guess it would make sense that they would mention it right for abel was one of our one of his most important moves yes it would make sense that they would fit it in for Manon as well mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily have to be the same the general thing that was in street fighter 4 oh in case people don't know abel step kick in street fighter 4 is this forward kick that when it hits uh, nothing happens unless you do a dash and you can dash cancel this move on hit it's a combo <laughs> and on block it's plus okay but anyway uh <laughs> yeah so, it's basically like, imagine like with, can uh, run cancels but being plus and being able to combo after it and getting like free yeah, pressure I, I would like to mention the able is a grappler yeah it, it, <laughs> yeah he's a grappler so yeah street fire 4 those were crazy times Mir, <laughs> and they might be yeah. back <laughs> but anyway, like for Manon in Street Fighter 6, uh, she might not have the, the, the dash cancel property. Instead, what they could do is that because of the drive rush system, the move is just cancelable normally into special moves. Mm -hmm. And she could just cancel into drive rush. And that's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, or, for example, uh, she might have a um, command dash of some kind. We're going to mention that later mm -hmm. and uh, that could you know get her in and maybe the swan leg assuming that it is the forward medium kick uh gets these extra properties as you level up maybe at the beginning it is not cancelable but as you get some levels uh it is and then eventually i don't know it just stuns you like a punish counter even a normal hit maybe i don't know yeah because <laughs> the track says on f is on fire now implying it wasn't before you know by the way, the idea of being called Swan Leg, it, I really like the idea because one, you know, Manon apparently has long legs. On top of that, the ballet dancing and all that. So I think it's a it's a good word that matches uh, the move. The next thing is kind of weird. Apparently, she has some kind of faint mirror, which you, you shortly mentioned. And uh, yeah. the track is uh, keep some guessing with that faint and fakes. Keep some guessing with that faint fakes. So she obviously has some type of mix up. Uh, we don't like there's a lot of different types of feints mirror there's one where you can like it's a dodge faint you know where you're like invincible or it could be a feint where like you might be going for a low hitting move but it's an overhead instead or a grab mm -hmm. since we know that manon is a grappler she's gonna want to make you want to flinch to want to jump to think that she's going for the grab so there's gotta be a way to counter you so what do you think it means comparing again with abel Abel had a mobility move, which was the Marseille roll, the roll on the ground, right? The combat mm -hmm. roll. And uh, he could choose different distances and he could mix you up on your wake up. So maybe in um, in the Manon's case, she could do a very short equivalent that might not be a combat roll, might be a, a ballet move instead, right? Yeah. But she might be, do a very short dash that makes you think that she's going to dash in your face. And then you, you, know, you press a button or something and she baits you that way. Yeah. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that this movement technique has some kind of evasion to it. And that's maybe what the feint is. It looks like another move. And, uh, you know, you're incentivized to 
try and uh, and stop her, but instead she evades. Or um, maybe one of her throws, assuming that she has others, right? Like one of her command throws. It's kind of like Laura's EX command throw where she dashes forward and tries to grab you. But instead, uh, hopefully it's reactable, by the way. <laughs> yeah, uh, but hopefully. instead, uh, she dashes forward and does nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you jump like an idiot and die, right? Still goes through. So fireballs. that's another possibility as well. Mm -hmm. There's another part to this too, Mir. There's another. Uh, there's some other move apparently called Grand Fete because it says uh, the quote is Grand Fete. Good guess there. Grand Fete. Good guess there. So that might belong to the faint as well, maybe. Right. It might be the name of the faint as well. That's mm -hmm. another possibility. But I uh, in general, it could be just a kind of like not a stance, but you know how Ken's old uh, thunder kick used to be, where you could hold it to uh, to faint it, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be the same deal here, right? It's a dash throw that you can just hold to bait the opponent to doing something uh, unsafe. There's another track that might tie into this as well. Uh, the track mm -hmm. is uh, waltzes in there and sweeps them off their feet and sliding in. Waltz is in there and sweeps them off their feet. Sliding in. So there might be a move that's called Waltz. And once again, this is, you know, the ballet uh, theme and has to do with strongly hinting that Manon has some type of mobility move mm -hmm. to get in, to help yeah. her get in. Uh, this could also be change of direction. Abel's uh, special move, like his main oh, combo. Oh, like his Rekka's? I, yeah. I don't know why right. I call them Rekka's, so, but. They had a kind of wonky built-in mix-up in them you yeah know, like where where you can go high or low mm -hmm. and uh, it's possible that this one the walls might be the the low element to this mm -hmm. right mix up for something else uh, mm -hmm. not necessarily you know low overhead maybe it's like i don't know low and command throw for example or just their own version mm -hmm. but um it, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit and so another move that we don't really know much uh the track is goes in with the arabesque goes in with the arabesque so mm. once again, ballet. If you look it up, Mir, you see you know someone doing ballet standing on one leg. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah really it's, help a, us. it's a traditional ballet stance where the dancer has straight legs and one uh, standing only on one, and the other one's behind. Mm -hmm. You know, it could just be a stance. It could be a special move that maybe is a hit. Uh, it could be another part of the Grand Fete that we were talking about before. Right. We just hear it only once, so it's kind of difficult. Right. They could just be using ballet moves and then just calling it whatever. You know, it might not actually yeah. be what describes what it looks like. So mm -hmm. can't really go off much here. But uh, we're just pointing out the moves. This move. Oh, man, Mir, I don't even want to pronounce this. You go for it. Uh, round point. Yeah, round point. I, I'm not uh, pronouncing the I guess the it team. means roundabout. We're just going to go with that. Okay? Yeah, roundabout. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the track says lifts them with the roundabout and roundabout takes them off their feet and get ready to be thrown to the sun. Lifts them with a Ron Puan. Ron Puan takes them off their feet. Get ready to be thrown to the sun. <laughs> right. So what's this about? I don't quite know if that's associated with the, the roundabout, but I think it makes sense because uh, it is implied that this throw somehow launches you. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if it is just a straight up launcher throw in the sense that you're launched and then she can combo off of it. Yeah. Or if it is just aesthetics, you know, you get thrown and then you land on the other side of the screen or whatever mm -hmm. this one seems more of a combo starter if anything and mm -hmm. it is possible if that's the case if it is a combo starter that it gets better with the with the levels right mm -hmm. maybe at very low levels it doesn't even give you a combo it just throws them and then at mid throw levels you get a certain height of juggle and then when you're a very high throw levels she just you know launches you into the stratosphere and she gets you know all the <laughs> drive rush juggle combos that we've seen on twitter for yeah, the other yeah. characters <laughs> And that's another crazy thing too like if she's got mobility moves plus there's already the drive rush the drive rush system already helps grapplers to begin with more than a character that doesn't traditionally need it you know like it's it's going to benefit a grappler more than his owner you know the the drive rush system yeah, assuming that the drive rush isn't bad obviously yeah yeah exactly assuming it's not bad because you still haven't seen a grappler use the drive rush system yet but it is interesting there's some kind of mobility move but Another thing with this grab mirror, like this, this is the part where it says lifts them with the with the roundabout and takes them mm -hmm. off their feet. I just, I don't know, I'm picturing like an OTG grab, but that's just not something you see in Street Fighter. So 
I don't think it's it's that. But that was the first snap. Yeah, no, that I don't. I don't think so either. Off their feet kind of implies that they're standing still. Yeah, you know, instead yeah. of being on the ground. So probably not the case if I were to guess personally. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't know exactly uh, what she's doing, we just know that she's gonna be a grappler that has some type of mobility, uh, is able to combo into the grabs, is able to faint and mix you up and make you flinch. And we know she has many ways to grab you uh, in general through, you know, command grabs mm -hmm. or hitting. Very interesting so far. And she's going to do it gracefully, Mir, because it's all based on ballet. <laughs> Does that mean no hurt boxes? <laughs> <laughs> and the more gracefully the Manon player plays, the more you're going to get bodied and the, the faster the match is going to go because it's going to build uh, metals. Right. So things are going to go very wrong. So <laughs> very, very wrong. They're, they're making sure that even though the stun bar is gone, Mir, uh, you can, <laughs> it could be lights out if you guess wrong too many times. So the final two things, Mir, is the supers. So uh, mm -hmm. we know for sure this is a super because it literally says it. Uh, it says, goes for Manong's level 2 super for some sweet damage. Goes for the Etois, Manong's level 2 super. Glides up and connects. Etois doing the business. Etois dancing all over that life gauge. Goes for Manon's level 2 super for some sweet damage. Goes for Etois. Manon's level 2 super. Straight to the point. Glides up. Connects. Etois doing the business. Etois Ray. Dancing all over that life gauge. There's a lot of tracks on this level 2 super. So we know it does damage, right? <laughs> so yeah. there's that. Yeah, I guess that's worth mentioning, right? Because uh, not every level 2 is uh, damage super, right? We've seen some installs. And yeah, it could be like a buff already. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we know. Yeah. I mean, it does damage, right? It does that, damage. That's what it says, like you mentioned. Oh, I guess we should mention that uh, it all means star, as I understand. So, uh, yeah. You know, something something dealing with the, you know, the, the stratosphere in the sky, the the right. <laughs> the void of space. So, so you think she's going to throw you into the sky? Maybe. Or maybe she is in the sky. Maybe it is an air throw of some kind. Oh, well, okay, this is the weird part. It says glides up connects like when i hear the word glide i don't think of going upwards i think you're going straight or downwards but it says glides up like it's, it's it's insinuating that she is jumping up into the air and grabbing you you know like an anti-air right. grab maybe she does it just very gracefully it looks like a glide <laughs> hmm. yeah because yeah, i'm thinking zengif's ultra 2 and three fire four where he just spins vigorously in the air and grabs you right oh, and intercepted <laughs> Tom Rocket activate, but instead, you know, this is the the French ballet dancer, so it's gonna be something great. <laughs> level two, even though they're damaged, usually once again, they their level twos are usually really flexible or they have some type of utility. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. even a damaged one like Kimberly's, for example, she can do it in the air, so it allows her air combos to have a conversion. So with a grappler like Manong, you know, having an anti-air grab super would sound like utility to me. Right, and I think it would have a lot of synergy with that throw we were mentioning before the roundabout, especially if it is a, a launcher throw. Uh, maybe this is your opportunity to combo into your level two for damage. Yeah. Right, and maybe you'd, without even investing into an OD move that you have to cancel just as a juggle, uh, this could work very well, and maybe we could score quite a lot of damage because usually anti-air throws or sorry air throws uh, they tend to have more damage than their uh, grounded counterparts. The last super, I think it's a level three for sure because we talk about damage here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called the the pas de deux. Oh, the pas de do is gonna turn out some big damage. Comes in hot, and Mono grabs him. This move brings a whole new meaning to the last dance. It's the pas de deux. Okay, so first thing I guess is uh, mentioning the uh, translation, which means a uh, step of two, quite literally, and it's another ballet move. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a stance that you do with two people, so I would assume that Malone uh -oh. just forces you to dance with her and then dunks you. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's probably <laughs> how it goes. Definitely. But the fact that she that is mentioned that she comes in hot and grabs them. I wonder if it means that it has some range, you know, like, kind of like a lunge, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe she does a ballet lunge towards you and this whoops you. The other thing that's interesting is that we only hear about these two supers. So we still don't know what the level one super is. Do you think this level three is as a grab super? We haven't seen a grab super yet. It's going to churn out some big damage. I don't know, churning, churning butter. What a level three. <laughs> 720. With that being said, though, Amir, like if we think the level two might be an anti-air grab and this level three is another big damage grab, then her level one has to be some kind of an attack. You know, I feel I feel like that would be the case. Yeah. yeah, I just don't know if it is anything that we've mentioned already, or if it is something that 
surprisingly didn't make it in the commentary. I feel like it's something that we've seen, though. It's just that half heard. the tracks are all re like regarding her metal level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but I, I like once again, the level one supers are usually like the invincibility and the the all around where you can combo into it naturally. So I think that's mm -hmm. that's the case for uh, Manong. All right, Mary, let's I close hope. up this this video so we can we can get some sleep here. Guys, yeah. let us know in the comments below what do you think of Manong so far? Is she what you guys wanted in a momentum-based grappler? And if there's anyone there that speaks French that can help back us up on some of these uh, moves, that'd be very helpful. I guess, Mir, we should uh, leave this video off with one interesting quote that will have people uh, deciphering it uh, in the comments yeah. for us. Please tell us what it says. I'm just as curious as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let me get my dictionary for this one. Remember that! Alright guys, have a good one. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, next character that we break down. Take care. Bye-bye.